Okay, at this time, I'd like to start the Hinckley Township Board of Trustees special meeting for the purpose of work session at 9.33 a.m. Astral? Here. Swedek? Here. Augustine is here. And um, we have Bethany Dentler on with us today. Bethany, I'm going to give you access to go ahead and unmute if you'd like to go ahead and speak with us. You're here as a guest, so I'd like for you to go first if that's okay. Oh, I'm, I'm just here to answer any questions that you may have about the communication uh, regarding the tax abatement application. I know that we're trying to get a meeting scheduled, and so I'm just looking for a representative, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, very good. And that was on my list of things that I wanted to talk about today. So um, do you want to jump into that so we don't take too much of Bethany's time? Sure. Do you have any questions for her before we get started? I I don't have any questions at the moment because I did have a conference call with Bethany back in January where she kind of explained um, the tax abatement to me. So I don't have any questions at this moment. I think... Um, I don't know if you do. No. Um, we just need to discuss who's going to attend that meeting. Okay. So um, what are your thoughts as to who should be the liaison for the CRA application? And just for the public's knowledge, the CRA application is for the potential drug mart that is um, looking to go in at West 130th and 303. I, I can go to the meeting unless someone else has. Um, Jack, I don't know if you had an interest in attending the meeting. It, what exactly is the meeting just informational purposes and they're going to I believe it's informational so that we can come back um, and present it to the board is that accurate Bethany uh, it, it, more or less uh, usually what happens is I would have a draft uh, agreement community reinvestment area property tax agreement as well as a draft compensation agreement and so the the meeting is really brings together the township a county commissioner representative, a representative from the school board, and a representative from the county auditor's office, uh, along with the company. Uh, we give the company the chance to explain the project to these parties. We go through the terms of the agreement and discuss, you know, what what makes sense for everyone. You know what. Uh, you know, what people would be comfortable with at least to be able to bring back to their various public bodies. Uh, it doesn't mean anything is finalized, obviously, until we actually then present it to the full board of uh, township trustees. But it would give us a sense of what the township might be comfortable with that we can then, find, you know, come to you with a piece of legislation for your consideration and approval. Um, my inkling right off the bat is that I would serve as the liaison since I am the zoning liaison. Um, we can all attend for informational purposes, but that would just be my inkling. Um, I would, I, I don't disagree with that, but I would not necessarily feel incredibly comfortable with that just because of um, you're already doing the steering committee and the comprehensive plan. And you had said a couple of weeks ago at a meeting that you were not receiving any help from us. You had too much on your plate. So I would not want to put any more I think that's on your broad. plate. I just was looking for help with the comprehensive plan audit process. Right. But that's that's where I'm at with it because I, I don't I don't want to feel like we're not giving you the support that you need again. So that's right. That's that's what I would be thinking. So I said I would be more than willing to do it, but obviously, if the board feels someone else is um, better aligned with it, then I'm okay with that as well. If you're okay with taking it on, I'm I'm okay with that. If if you need some help, <clears throat> we're more than willing. I mean, I don't really have a preference either way. I just thought as a zoning liaison, as um, I believe my name is already in the drafted documents that Bethany has sent over as the chairman of the board. Uh, but certainly if somebody else wants to do it, Monique, if you want to go ahead and serve as the liaison for the CRA application, I would be fine with that too. I am fine either way. So I can do it. Or if everybody's comfortable with Melissa doing it, I'm fine with that. So do either of you have a preference?
preference? Not really. I'll do it. Okay. I just kind of want to get to know a little bit more about um, that process and and everything that's involved with Very it. Good. So, so Bethany, the liaison liaison for Hinkley Township will be Trustee Astral. Okay, I, I will reach out to you and uh, work with your calendar and get some dates scheduled so we can circulate to the group. I, I thank you Perfect. so much. Thank you. Okay, thanks, and, Bethany. And before you go, how many millions of dollars of income would this be for us? Um, I, I would have to look at the property <laughs> tax schedule to be sure, but uh, we can have those discussions. So I'll gather that information. Obviously, we'll bring that back to the full board for your consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. And for I just coming. ask that you include trust, Trustee Swedek and I on communications just so we kind of have an, uh, an idea and we can follow it to the best of our abilities. Absolutely. We'll do. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right. And All right. Cross that off the list. Right along to. Mr. Bahari from the service department. Um, I don't really have too many things here to bring up right now. Um, one is like me and Jack were talking the other day about a truck, what we're doing. Um, I've been in contact with a couple people waiting on some source well pricing right now. Until I really get pricing, I don't really want to bring too much up. So um, that's pretty much like an, another state that opportunity pricing. So like I said, until we get that, we got to get a start somewhere. Um, the other thing I have uh, is just an update on the subdivision standards. I got an email back from Matt yesterday. Um, we had three punchline items. Um, two of them I already took care of in it. And there's, I got a, I put a call into him this morning, left him a voicemail. So just something about, because he has here in his second thing, it says, so if the township is not allowing, or if they're allowing just the eight inch pavement options, then cement stabilization would not be permitted because you can only do seven inch in the cement stabilization. So that's, I got to just talk with him and try to figure out how to word this right now. So that's, that's where it's at. I've got, like I said, a voicemail into him. That's the last thing that was punch list item. So once that's done, I'm hoping by Tuesday, we can bring this up, vote on it and get it done. So that's just where that's at right now. We did want that as an option, correct? The cement stabilization. But what he's saying, so you'd have to go an inch thinner because we're at eight right. inch right now. And he's saying that seven inch is the only option with the cement stabilization. Now he did say that a lot of townships, what they're doing is just saying that the, it's the urban, you could say, state it as urban is required, the urban build, and then it gives you all three options. So that was one of my questions to him to see if we can just put that in but also our other road build that we have existing now. So that that's my question to him to see how to word that um, for the, you know, to be able to pass this and get moving. So, but like I said, other than that, you know, it's coming along. This, this is the last thing on the list that he's done. So then it should be ready to go. And you'll send it to us in Google Docs again with the changes, yeah. or do you want us to look at them before we put them into that Google Doc? How do I'll you send you guys everything once it's pretty much finalized, and then I'll uh, tag you in with Matt's emails here. Okay. I'll send you the last conversation with Matt, and then you guys already have it on Google Docs. And like I said, the three punch list items you'll see, I've already did one and three, and then we just got to figure out a word too. So. Okay. But that's about really all I have for right now. Very good. Thank that's you. It's, it's going to be a fast one, right? That's, yeah. Ready to get back <laughs> out there and get some, what's on the agenda for today? Well, Trees? you guys are, che well, Trees was all day yesterday. Um, they're checking out, we have a couple sinkholes going on up in the Brookside Estate, so checking out that, and we got a survey stake that's sticking up out of the road. They got a saw cut off a little bit, so it doesn't pop a tire. It's a nice day to get this stuff done. I um, spoke yeah. with you yesterday about an, another accident on West 130th Street. It was in the Gazette this morning that there there's a, like a bump there. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know the address area, but I have an address of someone who lives there and has experienced chronic problems. Um, this one, they sent me pictures of the car completely off the road. Um, Chief Sutner's not in the office. And we had talked about maybe me speaking with him about it. You said it was a county road, is that correct? Yeah, 130 is Medina counties. Okay. I'm wondering if we could somehow coordinate 
somebody contacting the county about this area um, told that there are fatalities once a year there. People are flying down west 130th and because of the way the hill is, they actually catch air and then they're crashing on the other side. Well, yeah. You have to be going at an excessive rate of speed. To they're catch. going at an excessive rate of speed, which I will talk to the Chief Setner about when he um, comes back. But the person that texted me this information, um, their family has lived in this house since they were little and it has been an issue for years. So, so is it, is there an intersection involved? Is there? No, it's a straightaway. So outside of posting a speed limit and enforcing that, there's, there's not much else that you can do in that area. Okay. I'm just wondering if there's something that maybe the road crews can do to like make it more even a road, whether it's scraping it down a little bit or, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just a hill. I was on the motor vehicle and that was at two, three, six, three West 130th is what we had on that. Um, it was a car that however took out a power pole with all that. Um, just going off my head, I can only in that area and I could say it's probably an hour or a mile stretch. I can only remember one fatality there in the last several years, unless they've been, the, the crashes have happened on Brunswick Hills aside, okay. but I don't, I don't, you know, all the time there, this, this area even too was, I can't recall last time. Well, we were there for a down further for somebody that went off the road and took a telephone pole two years ago. I know that was because a deer jumped out in front of them. Okay. Um, but I, I don't recall off the top of my head, anything of any significance there. Um, there's been more things at Laurel and um, 130th than I've been to in the last two years than that strip that stretch all the way down to Weymouth. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's in that general area. Yeah, yes, it was. It was right next to that cemetery. Across from the cemetery. Yeah, that area. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just probably it's kind of I, like Stony Hill. It's a dragway because yeah, it's a that's, long, that's, it's a long straight stretch of road. Yep. And I would say probably it's in your area. I think is the, I've had more accidents where near where you live, right across the street. Yeah, yes, yes, we've had yes. we've that's had a lot, everywhere. and that yeah, is I, and that's not a dragway because that's a sharp bend in the road. But people do um, excessive speeds over where I live, so I know that the police are there a lot. Just just doing um you know on clocking center. people yeah, yeah on center yeah. so maybe it's some targeted enforcement for a while I'll talk mm -hmm. to about it. maybe putting up um we have that um the sign that did the yeah um, that's what i'm gonna ask him to do because we invested in those and actually it's a good way just to kind of slow people down sure <laughs> okay very good weather's coming and everybody's going on those uh joy rides mm -hmm. that's all i have for you um, Mike, does anyone else have anything for Mike? Doors are still out for a while. Yeah. Uh, as soon as ASAP gets the materials, they said they'll call schedule. So and it seems like it's getting warmer now. So maybe we stay on the perk guy. Yeah, probably wouldn't hurt. I haven't heard anything ever since yeah. they came out and did their, uh, they sent out their, I guess he's like an estimator private contractor. So yeah, reach out to him and get on a stick. So uh, I sent you a photo of that arrow up on. Uh... Yeah, that is an arrow for Buckeye pipeline. So, right. you know, I would assume, I don't know if we want to try to take that off of Buckeye pipeline stuff. Um, well, they're very picky on their gas lines. If you got um, a contact for Buckeye or you I do give not, it to me, I will, uh, I will try to find yeah. somebody to get a contact. So, Yep. The only thing we could do, like I said, and I sent it in the email was, you know, we could burn the line off, but you're still going to have a line on the road where it's burned off because it's paint. So, right. But then again, like I said, I, I don't want to mark stuff for Buckeye. I don't want the liability of anything. Yep. I don't know what it was for. Maybe it was for the paving when they did it on Boston. Mm -hmm. um, but it goes the whole length. I mean, those arrows are all the way up on uh, the old part of Boston on Oakwood where Buckeye pipeline goes through also. So, and those they right. dropped it right in the middle of the road. I don't. Mm -hmm. Well, they probably are centering it right on where the pipeline's at. Would be my guess. Maybe it's for a geographical survey. I I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. So I mean, I could see if you had the arrow on the center line and it was pointing north and south there, but it's running east and west. There's no reason they couldn't put it at the edge of pavement. Well, if they're having to center it over the pipeline for geographical, that's what I'm saying. They probably have to have that centered on that line. So. 
I, I don't know though. Like I said, I'd I'd have to call them and find out. All right. Um, I'm getting a hold of them. They're a tough ones sometimes. Mm -hmm. The other question I had, there was a PO that went out for uh, Don Cox, mm -hmm. and one of the line items is $8,000 for repair and maintenance. Is that for mowing? Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because he's been three mowings now, I believe, is what he's been up here. So mm -hmm. I just would assume it would have said yeah. for mowing, you know, as opposed to yeah. his maintenance mowing, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Very good. Jack? Yes, ma'am. Jack? Yeah, that you don't have a line for mowing. The mowing's in the description. So it comes out of three different funds, cemetery, administrative, service, uh, for fire. So repairs and maintenance is where it comes out of. Understood. Thank you. Uh-huh. Very good. Martha, do you have anything else um, for Mike before he goes? Um, just for all the department heads, I'm going to be working on the 2023 budget, mid-year budget for um, that's required in June for next year. So if anybody has any significant expenditures they're planning on, just to let me know. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. All right. You are free to go, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Chief Grossenbach. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Couple items for next. I will be virtual. I will be in Bowling Green for the a fire conference kazoo night. Um, what the first thing I will be looking for Noah Millman to move up to his uh, his EMT rate based on the uh, organizational meetings because he's met his time requirements. Um, I'm hoping to have our Marks radio grant, uh, the final quote for the radios. I'm waiting on one one additional piece. Um, it'll be right around the well, the whole the whole grant was. 12,000 X amount of dollars. So we're going to be right around there and we'll probably be just a little bit over it with this part okay. um, on it. Um, well we will be um, looking to approve, have you guys approve and then swear in two new members, Cameron Bott and Mark, M Matt Mor Morelli. Um, Cameron Bott is a paramedic for the city of Cleveland full time. Uh, just finished his fire school. Matt is um, currently enrolled in paramedic school. Uh, now we're starting paramedic school in, I think, July, maybe. Um, so we'll be looking, they're both firefighters, so we'll be looking to bring them on. Um, I'm sorry, are we doing that? We're not doing that next next week when you're not here. Yes, are, we yes, are. Yes, okay. we are. I want to get them on boarded. Jen, and I will be looking to see if one of the lieutenants will be here. Gabe will be in Florida next week. Okay. Um, Josh At the Baker. very least, I'll be around. Um, I have that on my schedule to come in. <laughs> Thanks, <Surprise>. Jen. <laughs> uh, we haven't surprise. heard your we that haven't heard your surprise. voice for a while. <laughs> um, Thanks, Jen. Josh Thaker gave me his letter of resignation. They're having a third baby in July, wow. so he's try he wants to spend time. He has uh, been with us for eight years. Um, he has joined during the especially during the volunteer days where he had nothing. Um, he works full time at the steel mill. So his has just been here to help the community. He never wanted to make this a career or anything like that, but he, he has been an asset over the years. He sure has. Thank you. Um, I will have the, the quarter one report. Um, I'm also looking, I talked to Mike and see, make sure you guys are okay with it. We're clearing out the barn to get the, for the association to concrete it in, but the, um, look to see if the service department can spend a day leveling that for the concrete guy to come in um, to get it. Cause it's all around the edges. It, it's all kind of dug up from critters and whatever else has been in there. And we're looking mid June for the Hinkley roofing uh, project to start. So I'm excited about that. So when are we doing the concrete then? Uh, I'm waiting till we get the barn leveled and then his schedule. I'm hoping to have it done before the goal is to have it done before the roofs roofs right. done. So potentially in the next month. Okay. Um, good news. I don't know the details yet. We're having, there's going to be a webinar on um, Friday. I don't know how much this will affect us, but Governor DeWine, I think I told you, has formed a uh, volunteer fire, uh, fire firefighters task force because of it. Well, there is $70 million through the ARPA uh, money that's dedicated to this. And I know it's recruit retention, recruiting. There's a whole bunch of different things. 
Um, it's not really spelled out right now, but they're having their first meeting on it. So we will look to see what type of funds we can secure with that. Hopefully, uh, with my understanding, it could even be turned up here. Oh, um, so it's with the state's ARPA? State, yeah, okay. it's the state. Yep, it's the state. It's through Governor DeWine released it to the task force, okay. the state fire marshal's office, which is, is awesome. Did you send that to everyone or just me? I think just you, just to give you a heads up. Okay. Um, I think that I even, I think it may have been the Zoom link for that. I'm not, I can't remember which one was detailed. <laughs> Excuse me. But I'm signed up Friday and Jen is signed up as Friday as well because I will be at Highland. Uh, someone sit on it while I'm out there um, to see what what's all involved with it. Um, over the barn next. I will refer to. Uh, okay. Um, last item is a little more discussion on the levy. I sent you guys uh, the breakdown of the pricing with the renewal and then the increase and then if we did a replacement um, with it. Um, The just to kind of the there's been a lot of pricing increases. I'm trying to set this levy up so we're set for long term for the fire department because of all the um ex the increases we saw in just five months a almost a twenty eight thousand dollar increase in potential pricing of the tanker that we're replacing next year. And manufacturers are already saying there's going to be another ten percent increase in materials this year. Um, turnout gear has been going up drastically. Some of these places have had two and three different increasing increases um, in their materials in a matter of a year, which is never has not really ever been seen. We saw the air pack air packs dramatically go up, and in the last six months, there's been a five percent uh, propane increase as well. Um, we sat down. Um, I know you guys expressed your concern about the, the full-time versus part-time, um, and I respect that. Uh, I just, we did a little pros and cons for it, so I wanted to share it with you with, with it. Um, one of the biggest things for the pros for the, uh, having a full-time empl employee per shift is, is that buy-in for the fire departments. Um, with everybody being part-time, they come and go. There's nobody that's really dedicating themselves to the, to the department. Um, it's also the big one is it'll it'll pretty much guarantee us a paramedic every day, um, which is is the hard one right now. We, we most of the time we have a medic based on how we do the sign up, but there's some days like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during the day shifts we didn't have paramedics on. Um, the other thing with the 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 with that it helps uh, manage the that 1,560 hours. Uh, that the state allows the part-time workers to work. I know that's on the docket in the state house to look at increasing it. And I really hope that the state passes that. They're looking to take it from the 1560. I heard allow part-timers up to 19, 1950 hours in a year. Um, there's a lot of stress on the staffing and scheduling with right now with because there's their full-time jobs are getting mandated and everything else. So we're, we're having call offs or guys are having to switch shifts and all that. So with this, it helps maintain if we can't have three guys because of the last minute call off, we'll at least have uh, two on two on there. Uh, but obviously the cons are the benefits and the, the overtime with it. I, under, I understand that. I just wanted to share. That was our, I, I, I think for it that the, the full-time is needed to start it. But I understand the concerns with everybody, and I, I respect that. Um, what I what I, what we really need is just that three man staffing for the safety of everybody. As I've said through this whole process, is to to ha maintain three man staffing there uh, for everything. Um, the pros for the part time is the obviously the benefit cost is down. We're not worrying about overtime. And it is a growing step for the department. And if that's that's if that's what this step is, then then, then so be it. We will we will look to that. Um, but uh, I, I think the the full time is the direction to go. I agree with you. But I it's I, I would like your input, and I appreciate any feedback you guys have on that. Um, 
I agree that full time is the way to go. It ensures that you always have three man staffing. Um, I spoke with Lieutenant Landis about a different topic, and he handles the schedule for your department. And if you get somebody who calls off now, you're struggling to find we're, one we're extra person. Yeah, it is. Uh, if you have a third man who's guaranteed and somebody calls off, you still have two man staffing. Um, I think that it would ensure someone who is dedicated to our town and to our department. And um, I'm watching the state and seeing what they're doing with regard to benefit packages for part-timers. That is going to be a variable in the future. Mm -hmm. if, if we have to offer benefits in any capacity to part-time employees. And um, I think that when I think of this levy structure, I think of a 10 year plan for Hinckley and that a three man full-time is the best way to ensure our obligation to the community to offer EMS and fire protection. Jack, do you have, I know you, you, that you, one of your things was you wanted to see the numbers. Is there anything I can help you with? Or? I, in everything you provided, I don't see any, any complete comparison of what your expenses are versus the money you're asking for. There are no specifics saying we need X number of dollars and this is this is why we're asking for an increase the, in the levy. In, Not, and you're projecting out for for uh, you're looking at 2037 and putting money in there. There's no way you know what that's going to be at that time. No, that's the vehicle. That's the rough vehicle replacement plan to save up uh, on that on the rough pricing on that. You're you're absolutely right. It's hard to do that, and and I understand that. That's the, based on what I can do now with the projected increases, but you're right, it could drastically go up. Um, uh, you were looking at the, the comparison of what, I'm sorry. A, com a breakdown in what the expenses are versus, like right now you have like a million dollars left, correct? Yes, but that's budgeted for the tanker for next year as well. And then, um, there's some just care, normal carryover. That right. There. So that needs to be projected out to say that, okay, well, this money will be used for this. So we, that's why we need an increase. We need an increase for these reasons. Not, not just to say that, oh, prices may be going up. The, the biggest, okay. I, well, we saw that with the last, the, the, that, well, the, the payroll is what's called, what, what is going to be the drastic increase in everything is that third man staffing adding that one additional member to to the roster, well, or roster I'm sorry. And that brings me to my next point because mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to speak with Montville. Okay. Do you know what they're doing there? Montville Township? Correct. Are they contracting with Medina they're, State? No, they're con con as far as paramedics, they're contracting with Cleveland Clinic. They're Medina LST. They're, they've been with LST for many years. So they have two full-time uh, Paramedic, EMT or paramedic? Paramedics, they're paramedics. paramedics through LSC. They're, they're housed out of the hospital, different of the fire stations in Medina. Right, they, and they have them for 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And I think that would ease the burden on you if we did something like that and provide 24 seven, two paramedics on duty all the time. So what is the cost of that? Are you looking for, well, they would have to be firefighter paramedics. Cause they're- They would maintain the, firefighters, mm -hmm. you know. So you're looking to have two full-time members each day on a 24-hour shift? I'm saying that's what their contract their contract gets them that for a, oh, it's under 300,000 for a year. That's EMS alone. Then their con their fire is handled by Benita City. I did not speak with them about okay. that portion. Yeah, they their LST only provides EMS uh service. Right, but that staff. was your your one of your main concerns was having a, a paramedic. paramedic yes. So now you're getting two Full time, twenty four seven, with their equipment. You don't have to replace the equipment anymore. You're looking to have LST handle the service in the community. Is that what you're? That's what I'm saying. That's an option to, that gets you where you want to be for the for the township, for the folks out here that have. That, you expressed that was your major concern yes. was having yes. uh, life uh, saving support. Mm -hmm. But I don't think bringing in an outside agency to cover EMS to have them housed here, then the fire department would have to go back to the fire side. Everybody would be responding from home because um, they're only doing EMS-based service for them through the Cleveland Clinic. 
Um, fire is handled by the, the Medina City Fire Department to handle that. So you would have to do have two different services. You would have to, with that model, how they're doing it in Montville, you would have the LST, you would have to assume would have to have them staffed in our station then. Right. And then the fire department on for fire calls, EMS calls, everything, or I'm sorry, fire calls, more manpower needed, um, motor vehicle accidents, members would have to come in from home because there wouldn't, we don't, the call volume on the fire side is not there to staff the station on it. That's why we do the joint based firing EMS because it's a full service package on that. And, and a lot of but what would the numbers be if you did that and staff the station? I will with, I will, a two, with a two man crew with a two man LST crew, which means you have to leave Metro and go to Cleveland. Clinic. Well, that, that's not we would be we would be kind of, we would stop mm -hmm. that. Um, we'd have to look into that because that's I don't see the benefit of having an outside agency just staffing staffing the the station. We we have trained paramedics and trained EMTs but, here, but it's financially feasible to do that within the constraints that's that's so what if you get two calls and you've got two men on one call that what do you do for the next call They're what are you doing now aid. Mutual, mutual aid well we also have guys that are regularly coming in if there's another call like you yes and other yes members. and other members logan and when gus comes back and all that um but you would still have that no, yeah. because if you're contracted for EMS, specifically in medics, you have to let only their medics handle all of your medical calls. Yeah, we would be, we would be have to, to be else. under that. They would be under. I would like you to investigate okay. that with Mont Montville. See, you know, okay. they, they probably have the same situation. Mm -hmm. How are they handling it? Okay, I will look into that. But if we did do that, then you could not. So the paramedics, we wouldn't even need the paramedics no, we would because be doing they can't they can't respond to a second call because we would be contracted we would with be, the clinic. I, we'll have to look into that. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know on how that would work. Um, I, I see the benefit of the community we have here, um, but I'll, I'll look into what the LST numbers are and all that. I think that we walk a fine line between monies and community. We have a lot of people on staff that have been a part of this community for a long time that we would be letting go to bring in a contracted service. Um, and I don't know that I would support that. I would have to talk to the citizens and see what they think. Well, how many paramedics do we have um, that live in the community? I mean, if that's, if that's what we're saying, well, they've how many paramedics versus how many firefighters that live in the community? Not just paramedics that live in the community, but paramedics that have been a part of our community for 20, 25 years. Hold on, I'm just writing down Anthony. So Johnny Lieutenant Thomas is a medic that lives here. Logan Davis is a medic that lives here. Lieutenant Landis is a firefighter EMT that lives here. Anthony is a firefighter EMT that lives here. And Gus is a firefighter paramedic that lives here. Oh, and Tim Wolf. Is Those a, are just the people is, that live here. That's, yeah, so, that's four, here. Not just, so that is four paramedics. Four that paramedics, here. yes. And that's not just the people who've been servicing our community. Yes. It's, I mean, I understand what we have to look at all the different variables. We have to look at all the different facts that we have. So I, it's something worth looking my, into. My main concern is the cost for a township to support a full-time fire department is very, very expensive mm -hmm. for the individuals out there. And, and especially in the times we're in right now, to put additional burden on every household, it can be difficult. I understand that. And, and if we're looking at the, the, the full-time, the, the part-time is the way to go. I mean, we can go with, we can operate with the part-time. It'll be a challenge the first two years just to get people hired on and onboarded. But it, I understand the concern with it, but the goal is to have three so that we can be cross-trained to handle the emergencies that come into here that, that we have. Um, and that's that's my concern. And I think bringing in an outside agency, I'll look into it. Uh, I don't think that's the way to go for our fire department. We're going to lose a lot. We're going to lose guys. I just don't think you'll have the buy-in with these. And LST, so 
they have different zones that they do go across. So are we going to have them 100% dedicated here? I'll have to find that out because LST has four state four squads, I think staffs through the, their response area, but they go all area. So would they, we run the risk of them driving out to handle a call in Montville or Medina city or wherever there are other responses, that would be something we would have to look at. And I, I sure. think that is, that is a, that's going to take a long time to analyze to see if that will with mergers like that it does take some time. So I'll, I'll see what I can find out and look at. But I, I think that the going to a three-man department with either full-timers or part-timers is the way to go. And, and the concerns with the full-timers, I understand and respect that, then I'd like to see us go with the part-timers. And I'll get some, the cost of the, the increase of the cost is with the, um, is, is the staff. That's where our significant increase goes. And trying to project what the future will hold is you're, you're absolutely right. I can't do that. But the vehicle replacement plan that, that's I'm roughly budgeting that I, I put significant more money into the vehicles planning it out, but you're right. No, I, who knows what the future will hold for us, but the, the, the uh, part-timer, the adding the third guy is where all the money, the money goes to on the part-time part of it. And I appreciate your work on it. Um, we, we know, and looking at the numbers that the, renewed level levy at one mil will not sustain us long term. That's the bottom line. And I completely agree with you that we have to be cognitive of what this means for every person in Hinkley Township. But that's also why they each get to vote. No, I understand. I wouldn't do it just like I wouldn't create a full-time fire department without taking it to the community. Mm -hmm. None of this I would do without mm -hmm. taking it to the community. And it's really not a full-time fire department with four full or three, full three, three, full. But that's what you, you, you said that was your goal was to get there. Well, the, th to have, no, the goal is that's just to have the combination. Good. I'm sorry. The term no, is the goal is just to have one full timer per shift with two part timers filling in to give that three man staffing. I'm sorry if I, yeah. It, and I, and I apologize too, because that's never been the goal. The goal has always been to have three men and at least three to four full-time people to assist us in our obligation to the community. Yeah, I'm just looking for what they work that 2448 shift. And that's all I'm looking is the two part timers to work with one full timer. That's what I mean. I didn't mean a full full a full time fire department as in everybody's full time that I'm not looking for that at all. I'm looking to just have a three man staff fire department combination is what they, they called in the fire service Ohio and everything else is have one full timer there every day and then two part timers there. So I'm that, sorry that, that that's being driven by your want to have paramedic. Yes, a paramedic. Yes. Okay. Guaranteed paramedic. Yes, that that's that was the drive. So I apologize okay. for misconfusion on that. And I think um, from where I am sitting right now, I think it's. Um, a different thought process that Jack just brought up, something I hadn't even considered before. And I do agree. I think we need all the facts ahead of time before we're making a decision. But I do still, where I'm sitting right now, I am still thinking we need the three-man coverage. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've already told you, I don't know that full-time. Yeah, I, I, yes, I, I understand But that. I completely, I completely agree that I feel three-man coverage would be um, the best option mm -hmm. so that we have a paramedic mm -hmm. on on all shifts. But I think I think we need to do our due diligence to see all the different options out there because we are bringing it to the community for them to vote on. So we want to make sure we are bringing the best possible option to them that we've exhausted all other options. This is what we feel would best serve our community. Mm -hmm. And then they vote on it. I will Absolutely, try and that's the goal. Hmm. I said, absolutely, that's yep. the goal. Yes, it is. And th I, you and I talked about this before. Um, can you just get us those numbers again with, um, you did the renewal up to the one mil. Can you get us the numbers on the renewal with, with the 1.75 and the renewal? Yes. The that two? So the renewal, it's right there at the top, the, the top three. The renewal with a 1.75 increase 
right. would go up to six hundred forty-one thousand two hundred dollars, and the renewal with the one millage would go up to seven hundred thirty-eight thousand nine hundred dollars. Right, but you have then under that it's replacement. One that would no. That's what that's a three with if we did a full replacement, which you don't want to do because we need. Yes, we need the renewal. Yeah, there. Yes, there it's it's a stressful. So if you do a replacement and it gets rejected, then yes, then we're back to the the, the, the upper part. Definitely talk about yes. we're talking about our numbers. Do we yep. want to go for the renewal or do we just want to do a brand new permanent? No, you have to do the well, renewal. That's something that we have to just. But the the up the Monique to yours, the top three are the doing a renewal and a new. Right. We, oh, okay. That's what that There's is. Different ways to do. Okay. It. When you look at if you do the the three part time members and. As Monique suggested, my position full time. You're looking at seven hundred and seven thousand dollars in payroll for that. That's based on we have different pay scales and EMTs work and officers have different pay scales. We estimated high in our payroll, be assuming maxing out on on having three paramedics and an officer half the time. The other half the time would be a a field training officer. The best we can on the average of the last couple of years of running the reports in our in our software. Um, and that's counting training hours, that's counting uh, our cadet hours, that's counting the being part of the Medina County All Hazards Teams training, um, CPR classes, public relation thing, our meetings, our officers meetings, work details and all that. Some of this stuff can be eliminated out of there or we don't always max out, but I still take the average of the years to, to put it in there. So um, which millages would cover that for public understanding the renewal with the uh 1.4 would um the renewal with a increase with adding a new one of one millage is seven hundred thirty eight thousand dollars um so for the public the renewal is a one mil the, the the renewal is a we do we do the one mil and and do the the a new one mil right or we can do the 0.75 new and the renewal which brings in 741 the 1987 levy brings in $141,300 right now. That's what the 1987 does. The 1996 brings in $235,800. Our six-year billing average brings in $115,500. We went back to the working off of two permanent levies where our police station is working off of three permanent levies. Yes. The three, the two permanent and the billing brings in about $492,600 annually. Thank you. I just want the public to understand when they're listening so they have our, our expiring levy that we need to renew currently brings in $348,400. Correct. Um, so the goal is to figure out what our mill is that we need and then determine how we would go about it. Mm -hmm. if we would do the renewal or if, and add a, a permanent, or if we do two renewals or however we want to do it, there's a million I, different ways. I, I, with the renewal, like I don't want to get caught with our pants on. I think the public supports us drastically from conversations that they've said and all that, but I under, I the renewal plus something is is the safest way it's to go on that. Way. It's the safest way mm -hmm. uh, to go for us. And I don't want to, I don't want to see us fall back on just those because we'll be struggling. And that's what the auditor's office had encouraged. Yes. Yep. And I, and I, and I know talking to Monique and Martha and previous ones, the renewal and, and Jack, you said the renewal is, you know, typically the most favored right away. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, that the additional one is up to the voters, you know, to see where they want to go. I mean, you us. have to be cognizant yeah. of the fact yes. that the health department levy just went down. Yeah. And that was nothing out of anybody's pocket. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I understand. Um, I've looked at, obviously, I, I, I pay attention to fire departments in November and May had every, I believe everyone in the county's fire uh, passed. Earhart just had one go in November, or I'm sorry, last week in May. It was a renewal that passed and then a increase that passed as well. Um I, unfortunately, Jack, I feel that most people really don't understand all of the fantastic things that the health department offers our county. So 
What I'm going to ask, sure. please tell me if this is realistic from everyone, is that any additional questions that may come up in the next two weeks before Jess is back here with us mm -hmm. again, let's email because we do have to make a decision mm -hmm. in June. We have to get this to yes. the prosecutor's office. So yeah. I, I would say by our next trustee meeting, we need to have a decision with what we are going to do so that sure. we can send this forward because we are coming up against the timeline, yes, which, which I already told Brian, I, I like yeah. to be prepared ahead of yeah. time and I, we're not going to be nearly as prepared. I want to be prepared. Yeah, I want to I wanna make sure we have enough of a buffer just in case anything goes yeah. wrong um, with the paperwork or anything. So is that a realistic expectation that um, through email and phone conversations, everybody can communicate so we can be ready to make a decision not have, next week, but I don't at our, have anything else to ask Jeff. I've been working with him for two years. I think he does a fantastic job and I support three man staffing with three to four full time people, including him. I think he should be full time. That is my opinion. Um, and I'll get, I'll try and run some more numbers. And I'll do whatever research I can. Yeah, kind of something well, just like you do your budget every year. Sure. You know, it's a bottom yeah. line is yeah. what we spent. This yes. is yes. Um, I will, I will email that over to you. Hopefully I'll try and get it done tomorrow when I'm in the office uh, to show that kind of stuff. But the, the, I'm sorry that I confused you or misconstrued anything with having a full full-time department on that. Um, but the, the money really is going towards that, the adding that third man staffing and the, the, the growth of the community, which we have to plan for and the, the increased whatever numbers for the vehicles and equipment and all that. That's, mm -hmm. that's that mm -hmm. X lots factor that we can't. Mm -hmm. yep. There's a lot to consider. Yep. And, and I think that Jack brought up a good point about, you know, doing the LST. I don't necessarily know that our community would be thrilled with that, having it outsourced, but I don't know because I don't know what the yeah. entire. And that's, that's, is. that's a longer research project to look into. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's important to look at all the different variables mm -hmm. um, and all the different options that we I have. I mean, from a safety perspective, it's it has to be considered. I mean, twenty four seven, guaranteed coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not you're not worrying about oh, I can't find somebody to work. I can't. Well, that doing yeah, the training, do, having the equipment. That, that's all. But they're only handling one type of emergency. And what I'm worried about is having then. We're we're not going to have the 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 resources for staffing because I can't even justify to the community going. Okay, we're outsourcing EMS. That's great. The fire calls and motor vehicle accidents. That's a smaller percentage of it is only going to be rely on and to staff that. That's that's going to be even that's going to be in my opinion a waste of our our money for that if we're having separate fire and separate EMS. Um, Medina City is obviously big enough. Where they, they run 1,800 calls a year, but they're not even staffing their fire um, around the clock. They're only doing till till midnight, um, and they've had some very high profile fires with including fatalities during the non staffed hours at the time uh, last year. Right. Um, but I wouldn't be able to even justify saying, okay, we'll do EMS there, but fire we're going to do here because Medina City is has been up until they're giving a test for for to hire because they're a city and they're civil servant. Um, you've had to live in the inside the city and there or or Montville Township where they well they let me cover. ask you this sure. Jeff. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Um, but you had said to put do do to three full time folks. One per shift, yes. One per shift, seven hundred thousand. Yeah, uh seven for for one one full time member per shift, two part timers, and my position was gonna be seven forty nine was with the, the full timers. Okay. So if if Montville is doing Paramedics for half of that, you would still be able to sustain staffing the station. But it would be a waste because they wouldn't be going out as much. That's what I'm getting at. Is oh, but you're you're doing it for less money than what what you're asking for now. That's, that's right. what I understand. I, I'll, I'll look into it. My head around. I think we need to look into it. I think that what okay. you're saying makes good business sense, but I don't know the model with which it, it functions. So I think that we yeah. need to look into it. I'll look into it. I'll I'll see what I can. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have anything for Chief Grossenbaum? Uh, the only other thing I had was I saw, and Martha may chime in here, uh, 
a check that we signed for for flags. And I don't know if it's you or not, but there was U.S. Marine Corps, National Guard, Merchant Marines. What do we do with those? We're, those are for the Veterans Memorial, which me. is right over here. And that's um, oh, we get those the every service year? department ordered them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just curious. Yeah. Thank you. Was that back in March that those were ordered? I, I, don't, I, I remember, I remember getting an email about it. Martha? He ordered them on Amazon. Mike found them for a very good price on Amazon. So they went through Amazon, um, and he's replacing all the flags in Memorial Park and then the flags on the street. Merchant Marine. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Chief. Have a good Thanks, week. Chief. Do we have Tom Wilson here too for anything today? I guess. Okay. Suzanne? Okay, so for the zoning, uh, Sharon Fisher forwarded the letter from the zoning commission. I gave you each a copy of that. It's right here. Following their uh, continued public hearing on May 5th. And they, uh, he sent a letter uh, requesting that the trustees move to the next step in the national process. Um, in accordance to the Ohio Revised Code 509.12, um, the Township Zoning Commission within 30 days after the hearing shall recommend the approval or denial of the proposed amendment or the approval of some modification of it and submit that recommendation together with the motion, application, the resolution involved, the text and map pertaining to the proposed amendment and the recommendation of the county or regional planning commission and the board of trustees. So that is the packet materials that you received. Um, and then the board of trustees, upon receipt of this recommendation, shall set a time for a public hearing on the proposed amendment, which date shall not be more than 30 days from the date of receipt of that recommendation. And the notice of hearing shall be given by the board by one publication in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the township at least 10 days before the date of the hearing. So with that said, um, this was sent to us on Friday, May 6th. So we have 30 days from that point. And when Suzanne and I did the math, that would just be short of our typical June 7th meeting. Um, and we have to be, um, conscientious when looking at the legal notices, those legal notices need to give all of the residents in the surrounding area 10 days. So we will not make the cutoff for the May 17th meeting either. Um, so I am coming to you with the ideology of either May 24th or May 31st as a potential MAP amendment hearing for the trustees. Um, my personal opinion is that the thirty first would be better oh. because we would make sure that we meet all of our criteria for getting the advertisements out as well as the legal notices um, and move forward that way. Suzanne. And then the next part um, of the Ohio Revised Code H, um, within 20 days of that public hearing, um, the Board of Trustees shall either adopt or deny the recommendation of the Township Zoning Commission or adopt some modification of them. The Board denies or modifies the Commission's recommendations, a majority vote of the Board shall be required. Um, so within 20 days of whenever you schedule your public hearing, you will have to have that on your trustee agenda to make a resolution to either. So what we've typically done in the past is we've had the hearing right before a tr traditional trustee regular meeting. Um, the hearing is like 6.30 to 7, like you saw happen with the zoning commission. And then in a regular meeting, we would make our decision. Um, I would propose that we would have the hearing and a special meeting following to do just that on either the 24th or the 31st of May. But like I said, the 31st allows us a little bit more leeway when getting notice out to the public. My, I, I like having more notice to the public um, and maybe I'm alone thinking this, but I just think with Memorial Day being the 30th, do we risk a lot of people maybe being out of town? For the holiday, a lot of schools are already gonna be out. Will people be on vacations versus the 24th? 
probably a lot more people are going to be in town? Or do you think that's not really relevant? Well, I run the Memorial Day Parade, so I'm going to be here. And I don't, <laughs> I just think everyone's going to be at the Memorial Day Parade. I think we're going to have a good turnout for it. Well, why don't we um, do it at the parade? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best turnout. We would get a lot of public comment, a lot of interaction on that. <laughs> and we would be feeding them donuts. So that's a win win. Um, I don't really have a preference. I spoke with Suzanne at length this morning, and I know she's um, very conscientious when it comes to giving people the time necessary to plan. Mm -hmm. um, and so we. Is this going to be a nighttime one? I would, assume. I would assume that we would do at least a six o'clock so that we could get as the most amount of public interaction. Mm -hmm. so Did the comprehensive plan meeting get moved from the There 24th? is no May comprehensive okay. plan meeting. The um, June. Yeah, June 14th is the next comprehensive. So <laughs> we've had just had extra meetings. Mm -hmm. there's, been a, there's been a lot. Yeah. yeah. And the reason to not do the 24th is because it's not enough time to tell people. Is that what you're saying? Well, the notice would have to go out in the on by the fourteenth, correct? We said, or the, by the thirteenth, by the thirteenth, um, to the paper, and then she's got to allow for ten days for the legal notice to the parcels in around this property. Which, if she just got them out on Friday, would just be ten days to the twenty fourth, which I think is, in my opinion, um not adequate time. I mean, it serves the 10 day notice, but we can do, I mean, we can do the 31st if everybody's comfortable with that, because I think the more amount of time for people to know um, that it's coming up, probably the more interaction we'll get, the more emails That's we'll exactly get. What I think. So do you agree with that, Jack? Yeah, I'm the 30 fine. Yeah, not traveling for the Memorial Day. You're going to be stuck here with me at the parade. He'll be here throwing out candy. Candy. Got to go buy your candy. So uh, the trustee public hearing at 6 p.m. on 531. And what time we would, I assume at 630 is our traditional. Do you want to do that or do you want to do it at 6 o'clock? I think the more time we give, the better. And then are you going to have a special meeting follow following it so that we can make our decision? Right after? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it starts at 6.30, correct? Yeah, we'll do a 6.30 hearing and we'll follow it with a special meeting. Do you, we want to do like 6.30 to 7.30 for the hearing? I think with the zoning commission meetings, we've been running about 6.30 to 7.30 with the last two hearings? Or are we yes, just going to do a special meeting to follow? I, I would just say special meeting to follow because I think it'll probably... Once, once we're I, done, move into it. Yeah. And a special meeting for the purpose of... Can we just use the same language that the Zoning Commission used? I think that is... You would know better than I. They don't, they don't have a special. Oh, they don't have special meeting purposes for the purpose of um, voting on voting it. on the for the, voting on the map, map amendment. amendment. Yeah, for the purpose of discussion and decision on the map amendment um, four one five eight six Center Road, Hinkley, Ohio four four two three three. Okay, so the purpose of discussion and decision. Um, the map amendment. Map amendment request. I was going to say for the proposed map amendment, please. Do we have to include the um, parcel number? No. Um, the recommendation of the zoning commission? No. Okay because we'll have uh, Chairman Fisher here at the beginning of the hearing. So I'm gonna just repeat, special meeting to follow for the purpose of discussion and decision in the proposed map amendment for 1586 Central Road. Discussion and vote. Discussion and decision. So, it's 
not up to her. It's up to us. You want to say that? No, I said okay. Okay. The decision is fine. Yeah. Did um, you know if Mr. Wilson reached out to Highland School Board with regard to the zoning commission's decision? I can't remember. Okay. I will work on the getting that information. Thank you, Suzanne. That's another thing on my list checked off. And then real quick, this afternoon, I'm going to be spending some time up at Maple Hill Cemetery, uh, marking some footers. We have about 11 or 12 that we have received requests for from last fall through the winter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to, with the service department doing all the work, um, get some footers set before Memorial Day. Perfect. And then there's a couple headstones that have fallen over that I'm going to ask them to help uh, redirect. Okay, thank you. Well, I did speak to Honeybee yesterday when he was in, Mr. Cox, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to have him work with uh, Mike Bahari with the morning schedule for Memorial Day. Okay. Make sure that all the properties are thank you. set and he's not coming in Monday morning to mow during your Memorial Day. Thank you. And I have the Boy Scouts will be out Saturday and Sunday placing flags at those graves. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Lynn? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I have two things. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the first thing is the community garden. Um, we have five plots that are open, mm -hmm. so if anybody is interested, they just need to notify us. Um, and that most people are, there's three people that have already started planting. Um, there are, the rest of them are pretty much planting within the next week, starting on Friday. Um, so I've communicated with Mike, who's not here, um, that, you know, basically what needs to be done with removing the tarps and all that good stuff. Second thing is, um, I checked into uh, the uh, postage meter for self-addressed stamped envelopes so we can start addressing them ourselves. Thank you. It will be a $265 starting fee mm -hmm. and then a $265 every year fee. So the first year will be $530 if we choose to do this ourselves. Um, and so I don't know how much the, I don't remember how much the, the self-addressed stamped envelopes were for the comprehensive steering plan. Uh, $2,100. $2,100. Mm -hmm. So it might be something to look into in the future. Um, we could also use it for mailing Kimble. out letters, mm -hmm. mailing out Kimball. Opt out. Like mm -hmm. Yes, but I don't know if it's, they said there's a 90% there's a threshold and I, I'm going to look into that a little bit further because I didn't really understand it. Um, when I talk to the actual post office on that. Thank you for looking into that. I think it is feasible if I remember correctly. I think we're basically for postage for the Kimball opt-out letters, we're paying roughly $800 to $900 a year. So if we're paying $600 and we can shave a couple hundred off, I think that would be a feasible option. So I appreciate you looking into it. Um, we won't be able to use it for the steering committee surveys, but certainly it's something to consider for Kimball letters. Uh, Melissa, yes, we we did have a we did have a stamping machine in the past, um, and Suzanne can probably chime in too. Um, but we found that the cost it, it was less expensive to purchase stamps. You still have to pay for the postage. Uh, you you pay a fee for the the meter. But, but then you still have to pay for the postage on top of that. The police department had one also. I and they, it's not, they got it's out a, of theirs. I think we're talking about two different things, Martha. This is like a, it is the uh, same thing? The, the same yeah. Thing. I, maybe what you're thinking of is you can purchase a, um, the chamber has one. I, I can't remember what you call it, but it is a, it's a stamp. It's a, it, it's a number that you can use for bulk mail, and right. then you can have that printed on all of your materials. I'm not sure if maybe that's something to look into. 
Okay. But our day-to-day -day postage, we 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 did have one for a long, long time. Um, I remember that. Yeah. So I thought we were looking into something different than what we're looking into. Yeah, but you do, you know, any, you rent the machine, you pay, you enter in the contract with the company, but then you also do still have to pay for all the postage. Yes, I understand. Yes, yes. You got it. I can look further into it and determine more information on yeah, because we do do the, I mean, we do the bulk mailings at the, Kim, that was basically what I thought we were looking into is a bulk mailing. Okay, thank you. Um, so one of the things that I was really surprised to see over the this past week was folks on Facebook who didn't know we had a community garden. So I appreciate you bringing that up, Lynn. All right, Martha, do you want to go next? I don't have anything. Okay. Trustee Astral. Okay. Lynn, thank you for that segue into the mailer. Because uh, we just talked about this yesterday. Thank you for keeping me on track with your magical Kimball timeline. Um, we're going to have to discuss, um, apparently at the meeting next week, whether or not we do want to proceed with the Kimball mailer for September. Or do it electronically. Um, what do you mean? Would do it well, mailing it out like we like Either the township it out or having the, the, per, the people come to us with the, the residents that are on the website. I see. So, the it's in my notes. so it's the opt out letter. So, currently, we mail the opt out letter to every resident to ensure that they each receive it. Mm -hmm. But what you're suggesting, suggesting is just putting it on the website and having it available to folks if they come in and then they bring it in? Or how, how are you? No, I'm talking about we're going to have to discuss if we are going to do the mailer again this year, like has been done for the last two years. So what is it the, was suggest I'm sorry. what else would you do, I guess, is what I'm asking. The, the notes that I have from the Chris's mm -hmm. um, <laughs> are basically, do we it was brought to someone's attention and it was on my notes saying in May, you guys have to decide, the trustees have to decide, do we do the mailing? Do we just go with them coming to us as far as, you know, printing it on the website and then bring it, send it to us by a certain date? Um, or do we actually send the, out the mailing to them like we have done in the past? Mm -hmm. It's just a discussion that you guys got it. Gaining agreement, understand. Gaining agreement, mm -hmm. if that's what we're going to do. I would say past practice, but we can discuss that at the next meeting then. Okay. Um, proctors, we officially have both proctors hired, and uh, Jackson just turned in all of his paperwork this weekend. I talked to him briefly and I wanted to talk to you both and see um, how we want to proceed with this since we're going to have two moving forward. I was thinking since Jackson is still in high school, he does, by the way, he does not want to do these remotely. He wants to come here and proctor. Um, I was thinking that giving him the BZA meetings would be um, probably a good place to start him because I'm not exactly sure of the time. I think minors, they have to be done working by 9, 9 p.m. Um, so I thought BZA meetings tend to be shorter than trustee meetings and zoning meetings. So maybe starting him on BZA meetings and then possibly in the summer doing work session meetings, because he really is looking more for um, the experience of it, not necessarily his paycheck for it. So I wanted to know your thoughts on that. My only concern is hearings. Um, and, you know, Lisa did a great job. We kind of navigated between a hearing and a meeting at the last zoning commission meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and this was one of my topics on my list to talk to you guys about as well. Um, I don't have a preference either way as to who does what, which ones I would just trust your judgment on them. Um, my concern is that we really don't have a job description for them. And I think too, that we need them to sign off on something saying they're not going to be releasing our zoom password to anyone. Um, this is because it's a brand new position for someone who hasn't already worked for the township. There are kind of, I 
would think that we would put some type of a procedure or policy together, which you've been working on the procedures of Zoom, and I appreciate you doing that, um, which I don't know if Lisa had when we did the last meeting on Thursday, because there was some confusion. She was texting me. We were kind of going back and forth and working on it together, but I, I also would like to make sure that they're fully trained before they start. And if that means sitting down with me or sitting down with Jen and completely understanding the process before they get involved, I, I think that would benefit everyone. Um, Lisa and I did the zoning commission meeting together. Okay. <clears throat> And I had sent you guys an email that I, or a text that I was kind of, you know, just need to make sure that they have like antivirus on their computers. There's just certain things that I want to be cautious of because it's a new position, like I'm saying, for someone who's not already an employee. Um, Jen Amber just came in with a wealth of knowledge and just took it over. I think that we need to maybe put some something down on paper for these folks. That's just my opinion. Okay, so you want me to, um, I'll see if each of them wants to come in and we can do um, like a training on it, give them the, um, the procedures that Jack has typed up, version 2.6. And I feel like it, there's like, every time I look at it, there's another thing that I need to add to it. And in, in that regard, like five minutes after this, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, cause I sent them to you last week with the changes. The only other thing that I would definitely need to add is that making every, like when Martha came in today, I made her a co-host, just making every one of the electeds a co-host. Um, Jen came in, I made her a co-host cause I didn't know if she was going to share anything on behalf of chief. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, kind of just doing simple things like that. I don't think that's in there yet. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I trust your judgment on it. I just would be cautious of hearings. Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to um, check with you both to ensure that there are no objections to me hosting an informal conversation um, like here at Town Hall with residents to hear any concerns and answer any questions they may have about um, any issues going on on May 28th, similar to what you have done in the past, Melissa. The trustee tees. The trustee tee. Um, I will not be doing them anymore. Okay. I had a resident, actually several residents come to me and said that they found out that I was recorded at the last meeting, which means they were recorded and they weren't comfortable with that. And the intent was to meet with folks and not have them recorded in the meeting minutes or on the virtual on YouTube, just to have a really organic conversation. Um, I have no objection to you doing one at all. I think they're fantastic, but I will not be hosting them anymore. Okay. Jack, any? No, go for it. Okay. Are you going to call them trusted keys? Um, I have not thought of a catchy little name yet, Lynn. Muffins with Mo? <laughs> no. I, I, I don't know. Mojitos. Well, mojitos. Mojitos with Mo. Not here. Not at Town Hall. Um, okay. Attendance would be up. <laughs> There's a day restriction here, Jack. I know. <laughs> Believe the women's club would have had mojitos here if there wasn't. We had cookies. They, <laughs> they probably would have. Hmm. Okay. The other thing I wanted to um, talk with you both about is social media. Uh, Melissa just brought that up um, on Facebook. She had posted last week about the MAP amendment change. And last I saw, as of Sunday, there were 153 comments on that post. And most of them were telling us what they would like to see there instead of answering the question at hand. <laughs> it, yeah, a, a lot of them were. But to me, just looking at that, that is showing a clear need to inform residents about, um, you know, big issues that's going on, as well as, um, you know, providing a source for feedback. I think that it's a great way to get factual information out there to the township. 
Um, I know I have mentioned in the past that, you know, creating a Facebook page again and turning the commenting off so people cannot comment on it. They can share it. If they share it, they can comment as much as they want on the shares. That's no longer a public record that we need to keep track of. And it's going to actually drive more traffic to our new and improved website because we're going to say, if you have if you have an opinion on this, if you want to discuss it further, email all three trustees on it. So it's going to drive them back to that website to get our contact information. My concern is right now when one trustee is posting on a private Facebook page, it's actually acting as the voice of the board without actually having a formal agreement about it. I don't agree with that. I was well, acting as Melissa Augustine. But it was you acting as Melissa Augustine as trustee because you said, and this is where I would not have agreed to this, you said that you were requesting feedback mm -hmm. and you requested that they text or call you. Mm -hmm. I would not have requested, I would have said, please email all three trustees. I think it adds an extra layer mm -hmm. of transparency so that we're getting the feedback, either email us or come to the, come to the meeting. I posted on Facebook on Hinkley, Ohio, discuss it. There's uh, like 1.6 thousand people on that page. I would say that was more acting as an individual that, you know, she was looking for feedback for herself. It wasn't done through the township proper. Okay. And he, I mean, as a trustee, you can go out and ask people's opinion, you know. I, I completely, I completely agree with that. I just think that when you're bringing the issues like this, a big issue, and you're saying, please call or text me, it's just adding, it takes away some of that transparency, whereas not saying, email us because now that's a public record. So we can go back to and we can we can make an informed decision on it based on the residents have emailed us. Well, any contact or that you come, get is public record. I, yeah, it was my, you just said it was my cell phone, township cell phone, call or text me. That's public record. Right, but then we as a board are not seeing all of those. If they're just it's texting you. It's all of you. our jobs to go out as liaisons to the community in any way we see fit. And I actually had a lot of people comment that it was very transparent. They appreciated the, the, the opportunity to have engagement that they wouldn't typically have. Well, I just, I, I think that we all see the benefits to the social media because all three of us used social media when we were campaigning for the election. Um, so we see that there is a benefit out there to get information to the residents. I just like to go on record as an old guy. <laughs> You used it, Jack. Minimal. You minimal. used it. You used it. You say, saw the benefit to it. Facebook? I don't. He had he had one when he was he had campaigning. One just to put stuff out. Yeah. Um, no, I see. And that. it also, I think, it provides real time information to residents, like emergency meetings, um, road closures, any township emergency. So this is a pitch for a Facebook page for the township. Well, I, I yeah. yes. Yeah, sorry if that was I not. set up a Facebook page back in 2017. It took me about six or seven months to do all my research and sit with the prosecutor and put the language together and do all the things that had to be done. And then after my uh, term ended at the end of 2017, I ran it um, as a volunteer for the township, no different than Brian does our website. Um, we allowed commenting. We knew that we were never going to respond to any comments as a township. So mm -hmm. we would post information and oftentimes share um, county information, which was helpful. But we were finding that people weren't looking at the county information, then people weren't looking at the Facebook page, and then it became um, a place where people were commenting and saying negative things about a lot of different topics and people. Mm -hmm. And that put us in a very unique situation where at the time the trustees wanted to completely get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't on the board at that time. It was uh, Becky Lutzko and Jim Burns and Ray Schulte. Mm -hmm. And Ray had contacted me and asked me to turn off commenting, which I had done. Um, and then they decided to get rid of it because the commenting was so negative and def defamatory in mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I can completely see that. Um, which is why I would recommend bringing it back as an informational tool. 
Um, we're just getting information out there. It's a free, it's free to advertise for your website because it's going to drive them back to the website. I have spoken to the prosecutor about it and the prosecutor was fine with it, especially with commenting turned off on it. So I just wanted to bring it to both of you and see um, your thoughts on it. Honestly, my opinion at this time is I really want to focus on this website and see what it looks like before I look at another option. Because I think that once we clean up and streamline and make this website more efficient, it won't be the issue that it is now where people go on there and they don't even know where to look. Mm -hmm. Well, um, but this would be something separate from, from the website. Because I understand. You but your, your thought process is that it creates transparency. It's offering another way, another means to get to people. But if mm -hmm. our website is better than it's ever been, maybe mm -hmm. it's the place that people go to. And that's what this would be, it, driving them back to that website, because what is going to make someone for the first time go to that website? It's This is a way to promote the website because people are on social media. Like you just said on the Hinkley Ohio Discuss It, there's 1.6 thousand people on there of but they were, it's going to drive that traffic of, I want to get to know more information about this. There so. were 350 people on our web, on our Facebook page. And that's about how many people we have on our newsletter. That was okay. it. Oh, and it was a while ago. So I bet there would probably be more people. But now we have for. Hinkley Ohio Discuss It, Hinkley Township Community, Protect Hinkley. I mean, mm -hmm. how many more Hinkley Facebook pages do we need? Well, but your complaint has been not factual information being posted on those it's pages. It's not factual information. And this would be factual information that we are releasing Which on the Hinkley on the Township website. page. It's on the website. I just would like to see the website handled first. We're, we're pushing for a website. We're pushing for YouTube. Let's tackle one of these things at a time and then come back, is my opinion, to social media. I'm not against it. I just think it's too much right now. And I really want to see what this website looks like so we can coordinate and see if we feel it's necessary at that point. Okay. That's my opinion. Okay. What are the rec record retention? There is a record retention. It's two years. Two years. And do you know how to download the Facebook page for record retention purposes? No, I'm sure I could figure it out. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's another, it's another facet. I think. So anytime you post something, you would have to mm -hmm. capture it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. I could figure it out. And well, actually, yeah, we I'm have the Hinkley Township Facebook page, but I think that Ray Schulte, he didn't terminate it. I think he suspended it. So I think it's still floating out there. But I asked his wife if she had the password and she does not. So mm -hmm. I don't have access to it. Yeah, we could contact someone. I know you had told me that in the past that we don't have the password to it. So I'm certain there's a way to access it by contacting Facebook and, you know, proving that we are who we say we are. As the Holdster. <laughs> I am not a fan of social media, um, but I, w I too would like to see, uh, get the webpage pulled up before. And then, you know, if, if that's something that drives them there, I, I don't think I would object to it, but I'd, I'd really like to get the webpage done first too. Okay. Is that okay? Absolutely. I, I, you guys know, I've mentioned this before, so I just want to keep it it's still there. It hasn't gone away. I mean, I don't um, even know how I would see it if you put it out there. So that's. I'll, I'll send it to you, Jack. I'll send you an invite. Well, the question is, <laughs> are you saying you're going to help me or you have a question? No, the, I just have a comment. If I could, when you have a web page or a Facebook page, sorry, um, and you post things on the web page, when you turn off commenting, sometimes that also turns off the share part of it. So it doesn't allow people to share it. No oh, what? It's interesting. So just so you know, it's a sometimes a fluke with Facebook. Okay. So it's fluky. So okay. it's sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't, is what you're saying. And then if you okay. allow I will have to look into that. I did not know no, that. But, not but if you yeah. allowed commenting, you can't delete anyone's comment. Right. That was found. Right, because it's a public <laughs> record. You can't delete anything. You can hide comments, but you cannot delete. You found that comments. out after the fact? Is that no, what you're I did not, no. but I did a, top, a ton of training on mm -hmm. Facebook before I put it together. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was going to say something else, but I can't remember what it was. Well, that have been important. That's my name. My said. next question was going to be, <laughs> and Jack, maybe you're handling this, is um, where are we at with that, with um, proximity marketing? Does the, te- does the prosecutor still have? He sent me his suggested template that had items in it that were probably relevant in 2002. So I sent that to proximity and... <laughs> He's like, where did you get this from? And I said, yeah, I know. If you could just take a look in it, anything that's not relevant, you know, pull it and mark it up and, you know, put a comment in there as to why. And then I'll send it back to Brian and get him to sign off on it. Wonderful. I remembered what my other comment was about Facebook. We would have to collectively put together the language that would go on it, Mm -hmm. which means that's just extra thing. Mm-hmm. Is it wouldn't just be one person that would post on behalf of the board. Mm-hmm. So we'd update it every every week. Good. Every um, week I think weekly we could do that. Um, and then, you know, if there was something emergency, like we can do what we do now, go through Suzanne or Lynn, that Suzanne or Lynn can contact us individually. But then who would something. run the Facebook page? Would it be Suzanne or Lynn? And Suzanne's not Facebook savvy. I think, I mean, I could help them. I think it could be, that could fall under administrative. (laughs) And so that's why I was volunteering doing it, you see. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Anything else, Jack? Or Monique, I'm sorry. No. I'm done. Jack? So one of the checks we signed was for uh, OPBA, a a legal charge Mm -hmm. for 490. And I guess that didn't come out of approved funding for that. So that was a... We approved um, conversations. We approved a dollar amount, I think, not to exceed $10,000 with the legal. Martha, are you there? Yeah, it came out of the purchase order. You approved the $10,000, Jack. But it, but it didn't apply to the, the contract work, correct? <laughs> So what I had brought up, what I had brought up to Jack is that this has happened in the past, that so that is only for OPBA um, negotiations. And, And this is something that had happened with the past board. And I recommended Jack being a new trustee um, was that, to make sure that the board agrees when a trustee is um, independently contacting legal counsel for something that might be um, just a little outside of the realm of the particular purpose. You know, so, so for example, I think if you guys, uh, Melissa would recall and what end of, um, Mr. Burns' term, uh, he had made a a call to the attorney regarding, I think, the non-union contract or service contract or whatever. And and that was an additional expenditure. It didn't fall under the previously approved purchase order. And so um, that it had to be done retroactively. So what I had said, and this had happened, you know, when I was a trustee, even before that, that we agreed that before anybody would contact the, the labor attorney because it's $245 an hour, that it be agreed upon by the board that that an inquiry should be made in order to reduce the potential for um, charges that, you know, may be unnecessary or may not be supported by the entire board. I'm not saying anything like that happened. I'm just saying that as a case of point, um, back in the day, we, we did agree to do that as a board. So that was my question is, do so, we do we want to say, before we go spending $245 an hour, which is pretty sweet if you can get it, 
Mm-hmm. I'm not qualified, but yeah. Do we do we, do we want to say, hey, look, this is what I'd like to do. Absolutely. Everybody okay? Okay. And that's exactly what happened. We sat here at a work session and you said you wanted to meet with her collectively, the attorney. Right. And I said I had been in contact with her and her response to us specified who she could meet with. With regards right. to I the, didn't the know. negotiations, which is, that's why she sent it to everyone. Okay. So that's where I left it. It hasn't been discussed again because there's no movement on that end yet. Um, so we can have further conversation about meeting okay. with her, but it's we're limited as to who can attend that meeting. But you know what I'm saying as far, as far as going, yeah, I'm going to have. And I, I did this. respond to her um, and, you know, maybe I didn't respond to all. Um, I know that I am able to participate in a lot of these meetings, but I have told her I will be abstaining from the meetings just to remove any potential um, appearance of a conflict of interest. And I appreciate that, but every time you email her, that's time. So she emailed us and then I didn't respond because she'll charge you for reading your email. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I I think that is my point that, you know, that's my point for everyone to be cognizant of that, that, that the time and, and it, this wasn't particular to you, Moni. This is not particular. Well, I'm not, to I'm anyone. not emailing her anymore. I removed my. No, no, no. no. It's, it's not no. even that. You know, it's, um, it, it just that uh, for any, uh, the, the board should, you know, should agree. Uh, what the topic is and and um, and how much time should be spent if it's going to be significant. There, there are going to be 15-minute phone calls um, that obviously are necessary, and and those are those are normal. Uh, and I believe we've just agreed to do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And mm-hmm. and watch if you do call her because that 15, she'll be like, well, how's your family? And I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. nope. Got to go. I'm getting down to business. <laughs> okay. The next one uh, that I had uh, with the old fire station wall project going down in flames, Martha actually had a good idea. Uh, maybe we pare that down and have the contractor do the structural portion of it. And then our guys could finish it out during the winter months. So what by structural you mean? Um, Remove the, the doors. The wall, the windows, right. the doors, and then have our guys come in and do the finish work, finish work the yeah. drywalls, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, if, it might they get have, us there. if they have time, I prefer to have somebody do a really nice job. I don't know what kind of drywallers we have in our guys. I mean, I can drywall. I can, I can plaster and sand like nobody's business, but I can't do it like a professional would. I can't, so I'm not volunteering for that. <laughs> In fact, I just asked if I could hire a painter to do my great room because I'm done. So do we so. want to bid it a third time as is? I think it's smart to break it down and phase it out maybe. We know the project's already phased as it is, so maybe we phase it so that it is just structural to start where the walls, the windows, the doors, and then have further conversation. We could even probably hire someone else to come in and do the finish work if our guys can't do it, and it removes it from the bid, which is putting us much higher than we need to be. Yeah. All right, we'll look Um, at that. That's a great idea. Kenny Kenny Humberson had a good idea, too. You might want to investigate selling those... The doors, those bay doors in the, I don't know what condition the garage door openers is, but those bay doors may, may have a significant resale value. That's a good idea. And actually, when I spoke with Kenny, he said another great idea is to paint the ceiling now, if we wanted to, just because that's kind of a thing that everyone's doing right now, just to keep everything where it is. You don't have debris falling down so much before the the east wall would be handled because we don't know what our time frame is to do any more phase projects in that in that area so maybe a spray painted black ceiling would be something that would hold us over to the next phase of the project and we'd have that industrial bar look yes (laughs) without the bar because of the deed (laughs) that is all i have Wonderful. Thank you. Um, We went through a lot of the stuff that I had in front of you is the uh, quote from um, Laura, who was again recommended by Sharon Township for the non-union employee contract revision. 
we had talked about this at the last work session, and I actually think I had given you the wrong numbers now that she gave me the quote. Um, she's talking about a review of $200 with the proposed changes at roughly $300. So a total of $533.75 with tax, which I would have her remove since we're in tax-free agency. I think that's less money than you initially said. It, it is. is. Mm -hmm. It was a good mistake I made. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this. That's that makes so me feel I, even better. Good. I will bring it up if you guys are in agreement at the next meeting. Okay. Okay, perfect. On that, we went through the MAP amendment. Um, the Medina County Community Block Grant is available again. And there's a webinar today at 2 30. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to oh, it's a Zoom meeting. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it, but um, I did help uh, Trustee Schulte when he was doing it for the historical building when they got rid of that beautiful ramp, as you recall and they put in the lift. Um, it's specific to handicap accessibility. And I had talked to Mike briefly about um, Kobach Field. I would love to see that paved so that someone who was in a wheelchair could get from their car to the field and have areas that they could sit and watch the game in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna explore it if you guys are in agreement to see what we might be able to come up with. I know that in speaking with the planning commission um, way back when I did it with trustee Schulte, you know, you don't, you don't get on very often. So mm -hmm. if Hinkley just got one back in 2018, the chances of us getting it again are pretty, pretty slim, slim, but I figured it would at least look into it if you're mm -hmm. in agreement. Well, I thought you wanted to look at these doors. I could do that too. The ADH doors, it's on my list. Okay. We, we could just do a whole handicap accessible world. I'll put an arrow. Was was that a community block grant? Yes, the community block grant. Okay. And development some. Um, the cemetery. I had talked to you about Maple Hill Cemetery. Remember, I had gone up that one day for the funeral. I wanted to see if you had any further discussion with Suzanne about creating a pull-off area, like we had discussed. We had a almost like a traffic jam. I had to pull off into the new grass to let everybody in because the two trucks were over by the shed. And I thought it'd be really nice to have a place here where you could park your car and visit. And then if there was a funeral that came in, you wouldn't get stuck. So I just wanted to see if you had looked into that or had further conversation with Suzanne about that. Well, I looked at it and it's, <laughs> people are not going to park and then walk way over to wherever they're going to, they're going to park next to the grave site when they go to visit. Yeah. That's just what they do. Right. Um, there's spots in the corners, in both corners already All where you can park. the corners were used when I went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was probably fluky. 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 <laughs> Word of the day. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, so the surveys, I just got off the phone with Frank right before our meeting. They are printed. They are ready to go out. Mar I had a call into Martha, and then I texted her, and I don't know if she responded to me yet. Martha, are you still there? Um, uh, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> She's like, I don't really want to be here. Um, the mailing fee, I just texted you about that. Yeah, I, said, I did reply. My my question was, how much is it? I think it's like 900 and some dollars. And did he let you know that they do assess a, a percentage fee on, on the credit card? He did not tell me about a, a fee. Okay, you better check with him because this happened um, the first mailing with Ray. Suzanne, is Suzanne there? Yes. yes. Do, do you know, Suze, if? No, I, I didn't have any. Um, you didn't talk to Frank? No. Yeah. Okay. So what happened in the first year was, is I think, and, and it's reasonable, but I think that there was a, a percentage fee if we used our credit card. It might have been 3% or whatever. And um, so you're going to have to decide if you want to pay the fee if it exists. Otherwise, if it's just a straight transaction um, for that amount, you could use your credit card. Okay. 
So if we can't use the credit card because there's a fee involved, what's the quickest way for me to get him a check so he can mail these? Because we're <laughs> now going to be giving our folks two and a half weeks to get this. Well, what, what we did last time is I wrote a personal check from, from my I checking account know. and gave it to Frank. Mm-hmm. And then I was reimbursed. So I'm, I mean, I'm happy to do that again if that's the case. Um, whatever, whatever you guys want to do. I can, do remember can they not that. just bill us? Well, they need. They the need to pay, pay for the permit. They need to pay for the bulk permit. If they need to go to the oh. post office and 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 pay for the bulk mailing. So they need to pay it ASAP because it's going to delay our project. Yeah. So I, I I don't care. You've already appropriated the entire amount, and that's fine. If there's an increase in the credit card fee, um, you just might have to bump it up a little by amending it, or probably or will. We can do what we did. You know, I I don't I don't care. I can write Frank a check and get reimbursed for it too. Whatever you want to do. What's yeah, because there's only like $25 left, right? Yeah, um, and I need to move quick. Otherwise, I won't go out today. I would say if, if the simplest, easiest way, and Martha's not opposed, it would just be do the check. Do yeah. the check <laughs> and we can reimburse. Martha, you're going to write a check and take it to Frank? That's what I I'm give hearing. It, I give it to Suzanne. <laughs> I give it to Suzanne. She gives it to Frank. Yeah, we got our whole Where's we got Frank? our whole backdoor mafia profit process here. <laughs> where is the, where is Frank that you see him? You, don't you have to drive it all the way to him? Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. Then mowing. Okay, so we're gonna have Martha write a person. <laughs> yeah, just ask Frank who he wants it made out to. I can't remember if I made it out to them or the post office. Just ask him. Okay, and I'll I need the amount. We're done here. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Um, Surveys are ready to go out. The Memorial Day. Can I change something on the survey? No. Yes. (laughs) Number 12. I was going to say, just give me mine. Save the the postage. Um, Fiscal response. I'm leaving, guys. Okay. Okay. Thank Thank you. you. Bye, Martha. The Memorial Day parade is in the making. Um, I've got a draft program that I'll be emailing to you once I finished the draft. I need someone to be in charge of donuts and someone to be in charge of the wreath and the sound system at Veterans Memorial Park. Any takers. And when I say donuts, it means picking up, I believe it's 40 dozen donuts and bringing it here and putting it in the room. And um, from where? From Hinkley Donuts, of course. Oh, they get that many, huh? Yes. Okay. I already ordered them through Ashley. The chamber pays for them. So it's not a it's not a township. Um, I can do that if you want. Okay, so we're going to put Jack in charge of donuts. Like That's, I, the sound system makes me a little bit nervous, but... <laughs> <laughs> so the sound, we can figure it out. The sound system <laughs> may be older than I am. Okay. And it's pretty heavy, but it needs to be taken right, to... I'll, I'll, I'll get my husband to do it. Veterans <laughs> Memorial Park. And then the wreath is already ordered and paid for at Countryside Florist. It just needs to be picked up. And I need to know who's picking up and what time uh, Saturday so that they can be ready to have have it ready for you okay you said it's the richfield countryside floor countryside mm-hmm. okay i will do that countryside okay so oh, Monique, right, monique's got veterans memorial park which is the wreath and the sound system and jack has donuts Are the donuts ready today no sir <laughs> so i can pick up that wreath the day before i'm going to say saturday, saturday. the day before is sunday oh set yeah okay Two days before Saturday, and then the um, sound system needs to go out. What that morning? That morning. The donuts. I'm guessing are that morning. The donuts are that morning. So everything we have to line up over at the uh, church roughly eight thirty. Mm-hmm. So you're you're moving early. The sound system's in the boardroom. Whoa! What time the donut shop open? Um, Don't we have um. Don't we have what? a full police department that day for the parade? Get the police to move it over? I mean, donut? they all, no. The police, you no, not, not the donuts. donuts. Okay. It's not the donuts. The sound, I mean, how, how many pieces are there with the sound system? It's a box. 
It's just one. Yeah. It's a cone. But I know, <laughs> how, to, I, I know how to set it up just because I played with it ahead of time. So I kind of knew. So it might be a good idea to have, whoever you're going to have do it, set it up beforehand. So you, you kind of know. Because most of the police officers are lining up too in the parade. Mm-hmm. In the fire department and the service department. Mm-hmm. Well, just like we will be. Yeah, if it's raining, we don't use it. But it never... We don't use that. Are you seriously saying that right now without knocking on wood? We don't use that word. When it comes to Memorial Day. It never rains. She's still knocking. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate it. If you have questions as we move forward, I'm available. They do. What time does Hinkley Donut open? 6.30. In the morning? And I'm still debating... On if I last year we had the donuts outside because of COVID, we didn't want people a bunch of people mm-hmm. coming in here, mm-hmm. um, and it worked out really well. So I'm debating if we should have it in here. I thought we were doing the bay. I we are, but we ne- have never had the donuts out there. But it w- worked out pretty well last year. I people, thought it worked out really well yeah. last year. People were able to come through and get their donuts while the ceremony was going on. They just some of them got a little loud, but maybe mm-hmm. we moved the donuts a little further out towards the crowd. Um, I wonder if you can even contact them and have them because they have everything brought in. If when the donuts are delivered, just have the 40 dozen delivered here. I'm just going off with a little blip of information. I know, believe it or not, Ray Schulte and his wife did all of this before. I believe and I pulled the trustees in last year. You want me to ask Ashley about that? I'll talk about that. Okay. And they're delivered here. (laughs) You can do the sound system. (laughs) Do you see how that works? We and that happened last year. Chris and Jim flipped. They mm. did, there was a flip. Um, and then you have to get candy, obviously. So be prepared for that. Um, the citizen of the year will be announced at our next meeting, May 17th. And we have all of the stuff that we need for that citizen of the year to be placed on the wall and um, recognition given. So I'm excited about that. And last but not least, I have the Medina Township Association membership invoice for all the folks in Hinkley Township that are members of the Medina County Township Association. So I will bring this up at the next meeting. Um, We've got Martha, Jack, Melissa, Monique, Suzanne, and Tom for a total of $260. And that is all I have. Anyone else? Cindy? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. We don't even have a microphone up there, Cindy. I did not put a microphone up there because nobody was here. But you can you sit at my table. Yeah, I was going to say, you can sit here. And if anyone in the audience would like to speak, please raise your hand. I must forget that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. In my yeah. one for Ray, I did too. So I was not able to attend the zoning commission meeting, but I did. Uh, It was posted last night, and I did watch um, what was there. And um, I thought it was a a very good meeting. I mean, I think Chairman Fisher did a nice job with the PowerPoint. And um, and Chairman Crew noted that the alternate's absence and all that. Um, She did, though, ask a question that was related to something that I had said and um, related in the comprehensive plan, it was chapter two, key themes, and he put up the slide that was relevant to it, which was improve the town center, but limit expansion. And had I been there, um, I would have gone further as I did in my public hearing document. And I had uh, talked, because she asked about the objectives and what that was, was just a general statement. The following chapter, chapter three, had objectives and actions, and there were three objectives um, that I had identified, and none of them spoke to expansion. That was my point, that it was, you know, promoting it as a historic institutional commercial social hub, ensure future infrastructure improvements in a round town center, promote a unique brand and sense of place, and establish a design review district to guide the appearance. And that was just my example of where, even though the chapter before talked about expansion, that whole definition of what does expansion mean. Um, So I just kind of wanted to point that out in completeness 
to what I wasn't able to say uh, the other night. Okay. So I know you. that was a rarity. We were missing a member and our alternate. Right. So it's something to consider about two alternates. That's the benefit of having two. Right. Well, you had a quorum. Right. We, had a had a vote, so. we didn't know we were missing our member until the very last <laughs> minute. So, um. I want to thank you very much. Uh, I think you've done a wonderful job, especially on the comprehensive plan portion of it. And you, your involvement is very much appreciated. Well, I think the, if it hadn't been being on that steering committee and starting to look at the plan and reading it, um, I think it really one fed the other. And um, I'm sure I'll be speaking at the next public hearing, although I don't want to be redundant, you know, but. Um, we you take, the time, the, you take the time to do due yeah. diligence mm -hmm. and I, it's appreciated. Every yeah. time we interact with someone who cares about their community, it makes our job easier. So I thank you for that. Okay. Well, thank you, Cindy. Um, Thanks for staying involved in not just the zoning meetings, too. You're our new regular now. Well, I try not to be. I really need to be painting <laughs> and doing Me some too. outside work. <laughs> I'm, but I wanted to come in and just Thanks. clarify that for um, Commissioner Cruz's comment. And I wish I could have been there to answer her question. So I wanted, because I'm certain you were either here or listening to it. So just what I would have said. Thank you Thank very you. much. I Thanks, appreciate Cindy. you, Cindy. Have a good day. I'm happy painting. Mr. Yeah. Larson here. Mr. Larson. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, I wanted to go back to the beginning of your meeting and ask uh, a little bit about the tax abatement issue for Drug Mart that you addressed at the start of the meeting. Um, it's, you know, that that whole project seemed to have gone on radio silence for about five months. I mean, I, I from a public point of view, and obviously there was stuff going on behind the scenes, uh, you know, normal stuff that, uh, you know, the public didn't know about, which is fine as well. But uh, my question, unfortunately, was for uh, Martha, uh, but it doesn't matter because I will probably put it into an email and, and send it to her. What and, and personally, I'm either for or against the drug mart, but I am interested in the whole uh, tax abatement process. And I recall during her uh, presentation about the budgetary process Hinkley uses, at one point she touched upon that and she seemed to have a pretty good handle on uh, how that process worked. Um, what I would ask her would be, uh, is this uh, something that the township influences or strictly Medina influences? Is it revenue positive, negative or neutral to the township? Uh, what, are the, what are the consequences of a tax abatement being denied just just a whole list of general questions and what i would want to do would be to send it to her and copy the three of you and maybe during the next uh regular trustee meeting she could take a little time and address those uh particular issues and uh that's that was really the the thrust of my of my question so um is 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 that something that you guys would be okay with if I copied you and sent her the question so you knew what the question was going to be? There's no, there's no gotcha questions in there. It's just, I just like to know how the process worked because I know some people really would like a drug mart. Some people hate a drug mart. Some people like me just don't care one way or another. Thank well, you. I think that, um, thank you, Jim. The, the drug mart uh, proposal, I hadn't heard anything about in the like last five months, just like you said. Um, the email came to us with a CRA application roughly last week, maybe the mm -hmm. week before that. Um, 
I've looked through the application. I am not familiar with the CRA process. I'm familiar with the map. I know that Martha sits on the um, county board, the county planning commission board for CRAs as a liaison for Hinckley, as well as Quentin Tift. Um, she has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this. Um, I would argue that a CRA is not necessary at this property. This is a property that was largely sought after. This is probably the 10th project that's come through on this corner in all the years that I've worked in Hagley Township. Um, but I don't know the pros or the cons. So I'm in a learning area just like you are. And so any um, emails that we get or correspondence with regard to this um, and information would be helpful in that process. So I look forward to your email and Martha's response. Okay. Can I ask you one uh, kind of a parliamentary question? I know that when I speak to you, it's appropriate that I address each of you as trustee. How does one address Martha? Is it she just, does just say officer Catherwood or? Yes. You know, I mean, that's, it's a little thing, but you know, I don't want to just seem, like I'm addressing her in a familiar way when I should be addressing her in a, in a different way. Her title is actually fiscal officer, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that she's like me. I'm Jack, and I'm sure she'd be fine with Martha. For your royal okay. highness. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. And, and, and for Jack's point of view, I'm going to be counting those 40 dozen donuts, make sure there's not 39 by the time they get delivered. <laughs> Oh, he's busted. He's like giving you Man. credit for a whole Monty. dozen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'll get the donuts. All right. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. All right. If any, no one has anything else, I'd like to adjourn at 1128 a.m. Second. Seconded by Swedek. All in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>